gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Let's go. Round one. Fight. Thank you for tuning in to the Crypto Street Podcast. Here are your hosts, Killer Whale, Prince, and Crypto Dale. And remember to tip your waitress. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Crypto Street Podcast. This is your boy, Crypto Dale. I'm joined as always by my main man out in California. What's up, Killer? What's up, everybody? Dale, how you doing, bro? I'm doing all right. Kind of had shitty weather today. It's uh, January 22nd. I think it's called Monday, but <laughs> I had to leave work early because there was a goddamn blizzard. I was wondering oh. if I was up visiting Prince in Canada, even though I would never be because I'm banned. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to smuggle out our maple syrup, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A, Grizzly. What's up, Grizzly Bear? <laughs> How you doing? Uh, I'm not doing too bad. Monday, had a good day. Uh Bitcoin was kind of dying again. Uh, you know, just another day in crypto land. So it, it's evident to me that one of the, everyone's that's listening, one of their favorite things that we do, Prince, is ask you, how is the weather up there? Well, um, the weather is actually really nice. I have my windows open right now, but I think it's a little deceiving. Uh, Mother Nature likes to play tricks on us and toy with my emotions. So it's probably going to be freezing cold again by the end of the week. Good. I hope all this <laughs> snow goes up your way. I think we probably have about three, four inches on the ground, but yeah, you guys. Killer, have you ever seen good. snow? I grew up on the East Coast, actually, so okay. I have. I, I was like, I was born and bred in the snow. Well, no, I wasn't born there, but I was, I was raised Pert in the near. snow, so I've seen it. I've got a relationship with it, uh, but not in many years, Dale. It's been a while. Hey, and I don't miss it. I wouldn't either. We're doing another noob episode tonight. What was this, Noob 303, I believe? Our third yeah. Noob one? So tonight, I'm, I'm proud to say I've got an alumni with me. My man, Crip Taps. His Twitter handle is at Crip Taps. And he's got, I don't know, are you, are you a big Christoph Porzingis fan? Uh, more of just a basketball fan, but uh, I thought it was a good name, so I went with it. Dude, he is slamming is the good shit out of that Bitcoin in your picture. Oh, yeah. On Twitter. <laughs> so what's good, man? Give us a little uh, intro on yourself. Yeah, man. So uh, I just got started into crypto, crypto recently, obviously. I'm a noob. Back in uh, late November, essentially, I was uh, trying to cash out of a sports gambling site. Really into sports. Uh, nice. uh, so And crypto, uh, uh, Bitcoin was one of the options. So I got to digging around in there and saw... A lot of people making money. Uh, so started following a bunch of people on Twitter, kind of ruined my main Twitter account. So I uh, <laughs> tried to unfollow everyone there and then started this new one. Uh, and that's been a much better experience. So I recommend doing that if uh, you're going <laughs> all into crypto. Um, you know, yeah. I did the exact same thing. I started following a bunch of people with my personal account. And then like all my friends were like, dude, quit posting all this crypto <laughs> shit. So I was like, all right, I'll just start my own one different one and and then born was dale and then born was dale. <laughs> dale dale which is a pretty good one dale's all right um yeah he's kind of a douche but whatever yeah. so um taps i was gonna oh what i wanted to say was people new people out there when you get referred to as a noob there is nothing wrong with that you're not getting poked fun at i was a noob once prince was a noob killer was a noob there's nothing wrong with being called a noob it's just your life cycle in crypto. Am I right? I totally get it, man. I, I have no problem with that term. So go go on in on me. <laughs> See, I like the term rookie a little bit more. Just a rookie. rookie. There you go. Ooh, yeah. Ooh I kind of dig that. Okay, so Taps, the stage is yours. Go ahead and ask away, buddy. Yeah, uh, so I sent you guys some questions. Uh, so like, how do you guys balance your crypto time? Like, I spend a lot of time on Twitter myself, but I like looking at charts. Uh, what, what do you guys do as far as like uh, FA, TA, uh, and then other things like researching uh, 
master nodes. So it's hard because I mean, like, so much of my time is crypto time lately. You know, it's like everything, and sure. I feel like everything is crypto. I'm looking at crypto chats all day. I'm looking at charts all day. I'm looking at Blockfolio, looking at Reddit, looking at Twitter, yada yada yada. So it's very tough. And like, I'm actually, I was thinking about this today. Like, I'm really overwhelmed by all the shit. So. I don't really have a good solution for that now. And I think it's super overwhelming. It's an information overload. There are too many different coins, too many different new ICOs. Um, but I would say uh, some of the more valuable resources, again, I like Twitter because it's so current. There's sentiment. I think Reddit is still pretty good just because in general, if something's a really crappy point, it'll be downvoted or whatever. I mean, that's super, definitely not true all the time, but it's at least some kind of framework. So just focus on like the most high quality news sources you can find, you know, and kind of judge that for yourself, which is tough. And it kind of varies per person, but. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> like, I think, well, even trying to balance real life outside of crypto is hard, right? Like, I I have a trouble focusing on what I'm supposed to be doing through the day when crypto is going on. And, you know, it's so for me, even that, just trying to balance it out, it, it's really tough, but same time I think uh, I think there's a lot to be said with kind of an obsessive work ethic so you know even if yeah it's all you do you know what there's probably it's probably gonna lead to some good at some point right if you're just consistently putting in the time so yeah even though it might take up your entire life uh, like it does for mine I can say that you know it's kind of worked out for the best right so <clears throat> having that obsession you know what I think a healthy obsession is good at the same time right yeah, and the thing is, if you really want to compete at the highest level, whether it be trading or, you know, you're a lawyer, you work in private equity, you work as whatever, a dentist, you know, if you want to be the top of your field in anything, you're going to have to dedicate your life fairly significantly to that thing because there are people out there who are doing that. And so if you're not, you're not going to be able to be the highest level, not going to be able to compete. And so there is a certain amount of dedication, like you said, Prince. Um, and I also think um, you know, we talk about this all the time, but crypto is so complex that like you can literally spend all day, every day studying it and researching it and still not have any idea about certain parts <laughs> of it. Like personally, yeah. I know jack shit about programming and I'm at the point where like, I think it'd kind of be a waste of time for me to try to learn it because I'm never going to understand it as much as people who actually understand it and have been studying it for a while. So I almost feel like it's better off just kind of honing the things I know I'm already somewhat adept at like trading and, you know, yeah. investing and stuff like that. So know your own skills too. So, yo, here's my answer. I think key to all of these things is finding a good network of people that you can trust. Because like Killer says, I don't know shit about programming, nor will I probably ever because that's not high on my priority list. But I know some people, for instance, in the pod that are good programmers, and I've seen their, I've seen their work or their, their uh, blessings on other programming. So I trust them enough where if, if we're talking about a coin or something in the net within our, you know, our social network, I know enough that what they're saying is is legit and not a bunch of bullshit. So um so there's that aspect. Also, there's so many coins out there that it's really hard to to be able to stay up to date on all of them. So again, back to having a strong social network, if someone in our network is saying, "Hey, watch out for Lux, you can kind of, you, you can you kind worked of it in. Up. There you right. go. Yeah, there it is. Everyone listening, there's the shell. Yo, if, if, Dale, that's like, that's such a good point about community. Like, I feel like we kind of take it for granted because we've had like the pod, which has been so cool for like, you know, several months now. And we've kind of forgotten what it was like pre having that. Like, we have so many amazing resources, so many smart people. Um, shout out Chunk, Coin Maverick. I can literally say, like, my profitability, it has gone up since finding a crew of people, right? Um, and it's it's tough yeah, to find totally. a crew because it's like, what are you going to do? Go around and be like, hey, man, uh, you want to talk uh, all day and with me and trade? And, you know, it's kind of <laughs> awkward, right? So it's, it's one of those things that just kind of happens. You guys might see the same way, see things. And, and you know what? Just kind of… Yeah, it's just like a job. Like, you're not really going to know if you like it or not until you actually get into a group. You know, join a Telegram group, preferably Baby Pod or the Pod, because they're the best. But, you know, join anything you want and just kind of see if you fit in, see if you have a feel, if you mesh with the people. I mean, I think part of what drew us to the pod was, like, we really like talking with all the people. It's not just that they're smart, but, like, we have fun joking around with them. So find a group you feel comfortable with and people you'll want to go to with questions. Because if you don't feel comfortable, you know, putting yourself out there and going, hey, I don't know what I'm talking about here. What do you guys think? then it's not a great group to be a part of. So find somewhere where you fit in. 
So to re- to kind of piggyback on that, that what I did first when I got after I talked to everyone knows Jebus told me Jabus told me to to network was the key to his success. So I just joined a shit ton of coin Telegram groups, and then I would just kind of follow them and and kind of lurk and I could tell through how people would talk if they would be someone I'd want to talk to. So I just direct message them and say, look, you know, I don't know shit about this. What, you know, and, and so I hit it off with a couple of those people. Some of them I still talk to, to this day, but not a lot, but so th- there's one way to do it. Um, you know, find people on Twitter that you like and ask if, if they have any telegram or Slack or discord, even though it's dog shit um, groups that, that they like um, so basically then back on that is I'll, I'll see what these guys are saying or shilling in the pot or baby pot and kind of do my own research on that and, you know, establish if it's something I want to chase or get into or, or go on from there. So Yeah. And, and Cryptops, I know you asked like, how do we vet, like, how do we get good information? Like, how do we, but the thing is like, if, when you have a good community, a lot of that good information gets brought to you. So it's not even like you have to go out there and be like, what's a good ICO to invest in? It's more like you have like a few really good ones being thrown at you. And you're like, okay, which one do I like the most? Which makes it so much easier because you're having like tailored suggestions from people you trust. Um, so I think it's, I mean, that was a great thing to bring up, Dale. And it's, again, I think it's something I've taken for granted. Um, just cause it's been, you know, a pretty cool community for a long time. But if you're, especially if you're new and you don't have that base of people, that's very important. That answer for you taps. I know we kind of got winded there for a little bit, but cool. Yeah. Great answers guys. Thanks. I think this one kind of fits in with it as well. Uh, just for like, your own sanity. Have you been talking to your family and friends about this? Like, do they know you're in the space? I haven't, I haven't told anybody, uh, mostly just because I don't want to talk about it, uh, because it's taken up all my free time. I don't want to take it up like my social <laughs> life too. So what do you guys think? Let me tell you something about this. I was the same way too. And then all of a sudden I realized it was all I wanted to fucking talk about. So my, my immediate family knows that I'm in this. Um, some of my inner circle friends know I'm in it, but but that's it. Mainly, I just don't, you know, I wear a Bitcoin t-shirt out and get some looks. I'm in a small town in Iowa too, so it's uh, it's a little harder for me. But I I mean, honestly, I don't give a shit anymore. That's why I, I wear the pod shirt around and the, the Bitcoin shirt, because if they want to ask about it, I'm going to give them a damn earful about it. See, I don't, I don't have a life. I don't have a social life, really. Uh, so you're a it's hard for me. To, yeah, it's hard for me to actually get into whole like <laughs> social situations where people want to talk to me about it. Um, obviously, like my family knows, and there's the odd, odd friend who might have, I don't know, heard from another person who heard from someone else. I don't really talk to a lot of people. You know, like most of the people I talk to on a daily basis are crypto people. <laughs> so, like I said. Yeah, so yeah, boy. It's yeah, it's very much like a mixed bag. Like at some points, I I regret talking about it, but like yeah. it, it kind of depends on the person. Like I'll give you an example. My dad, I've told him about crypto. He's you know a smart, sensible person. He's researched it on his own. Um, so it's really fun to talk to him about that stuff now because I'm like, oh, it's my dad, and like he actually knows what he's talking about with this stuff at this point. Like we can converse about coins. So it's really cool, and I cherish that, and I think that's a really cool thing. But there are certain people where it's like, <laughs> fuck, I fucking regret mentioning this so badly. Like, these are people who basically treat me like Coinbase customer support now, where I'm yeah. like, we didn't really have, like, this chatty of a relationship before. All of a sudden, I'm getting calls at 1130 at night going, oh, I think I sent to the wrong address. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, dude. I, well, I don't know where it is. I'm not going to check the block explore. I'm sorry. but For me, the worst is uh, dealing with the people who, they don't know anything really about crypto. They don't have any skin in the game. But then... They find out, oh, you're in crypto, and they're gonna tell you everything about crypto and how yeah. how everything oh, yeah. is. And it's like, oh bro, you really need to be careful here. That might be a scam, bro. It's like, man, like I have skin in the game. I've been here. Like, don't start telling me how it works. Another variation is like the person who like knows you're involved in crypto and just asks you consistently over like four months, like, when are you gonna do this crypto stuff for me? Like, when are you gonna teach me about crypto? I'm like, heaven forbid you use Google and you know, right. search about it and read about it. I mean, we've been you've been saying this for half a year. At this point, you know, you missed out on Ripple, and it's like it just it, do your own research, you know. And and it, with the internet, like, there's no excuse. All the knowledge is out there. It's just on you to consume it, you know. So, yo, I think the worst, the worst though, not you know, in real life, people are 
normies, as everyone calls them, is the people that feel the need to text you when Bitcoin is falling. Oh, they're <laughs> trash. What do you think here? The, the fucking, fucking worst. I don't know. I, I hate that. <laughs> I can't stand it. It's the like, other day, someone said to me, he's like, so Bitcoin is the bubble pop. Huh? I said, <laughs> why? Why do you think the bubble popped? Well, it's down $10,000. It crashed $10,000. I'm like, well, first off, it did not crash $10,000. <laughs> you know, its peak was right around the 20K. And at the time, it was like 10,5. And I'm like, it didn't, you, I didn't go to bed and wake up and it was, you know, I didn't go to bed at 20K and wake up and it was fucking 10,5. Okay. So get fucked. <laughs> Dude, I, I have one guy at work. He's like a very smart guy outside of crypto, but he, you can tell like he thinks he knows crypto and he really doesn't. I think I probably talked about him before. Um, but anyway, so like, I swear, like on every time Bitcoin dips, you can expect him just to like walk by and be like, "Hey, guy, how's that Bitcoin doing?" You know, <laughs> like, "Oh, you're really just wondering now, now that it's down thirty percent in two days." Yeah. Yeah, nothing compelled you to ask me before. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, okay, buddy. You're like, not great, not great. <laughs> so, taps. Are you gonna tell your family and friends? No, probably not. <laughs> I don't want those. He's terrified texts. you now. <laughs> I don't want those texts every time it drops. You know, thousand dollars. Like, oh, no, the so worst are the customer support. Like, like uh, why was the fee so much? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I have to help him with computers enough. I don't need to be talking <laughs> them through crypto. Hey, did I just hear that crypto crypt taps? Is the new support for Coinbase on oh, Twitter? No. Oh, oh no! <laughs> uh, 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 hey, I speaking of so. com- speaking of Coinbase, uh, what do you guys think of alternatives to Coinbase? Like, I know a lot of people they're they're obviously getting in. Coinbase is one of the easiest options, but like, what about Gemini? I signed up like three weeks ago. It took them you know, just I got my identity verified yesterday. I think. Yeah. So yeah, just insane. It, it, you know, I'm signed up and, and verified and everything, and it took me a long time to get it to, but I haven't messed with it. I know Randy in the pod swears by it. Dude, Gemini, maybe this is a pattern, by the way, because I've had the exact same experience. Like, when I first got into crypto, I was like, oh, Gemini, the Winklevoss brothers, this was, like, legit exchange. Like, it looks cool. The interface yeah. is nice. It took him, like, a month to verify me, and by the time I actually got verified, I had forgotten about it and moved on to Coinbase. Me and too. so, I mean, these companies have to realize, like, People are impatient as shit nowadays. Like you gotta uh, yeah. really work on your customer service and get this stuff figured out. Like it was such a system overload in a sense right now. I think like I've had a few people message me uh, who are Canadians, and now because I'm Canadian, I don't use Gemini or anything like that. But uh, I use Quadriga, which is a Canadian based exchange. Racist, yeah. And, um, <laughs> and now we're kind of limited out here. You pig for prints. What we can use, right? <laughs> And so I get people messing me and they're like, man, this verification, it's going on like two weeks now and I got nothing. And you know, it's like when I did the verification, it was like next day it was done. And Dude. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like that sucks. And I'm like, I think that's just a sign of the market right now. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just, yeah, I've had so many people signing on Poloniex and they're like, do I really need to give Poloniex my social? And I was like, when I signed up, you just need an email address basically. Yeah. I don't know. I guess. Yeah. You know, like, so, and then I get a lot of people and they're like, well, I can't get my verification done so I can't get any money into the market and how the hell can I do this and this is where it comes down I'm going to say your easiest method and now it's not the best method. drum roll please <laughs> it is not the best method but the easiest and quickest is going to be a Bitcoin ATM now you got to be careful you got to figure out the ones with the lowest fees because some of them will gouge your eyes out on fees um, I've seen some ridiculous stuff out here but you got to, you know, research it. But yeah, if you want convenience, you want like right now, a Bitcoin ATM is going to be your best bet. And usually you can just research those up and find locations online. But yeah, it's it's tough right now because there's such a mass influx of people that these exchanges really can't keep up with it. And so it's just slowing yeah. everything down like crazy. And you know what? It's, it's the sort of thing that's kind of unavoidable. Like the volume shifted in a major way from Poloniex to Bittrex earlier this year or earlier in 2017 because Poloniex was having so many performance issues due to getting so crowded that people were like, fuck Poloniex, I'm going to Bittrex, (laughs) which was the closest alternative. And then you fast forward like four months later and Bittrex runs like shit. It's too slow because there are so many people. And like, part of this is kind of unavoidable. You know, now Poloniex probably runs more smoothly, if anything. Well, what we saw, Binance, Bittrex, and was it Polo as well? Did they also close down new registry, new registrations? Like, it's like every big exchange is just like, hey, we got to press pause here because we are just way too overwhelmed. And I think that was probably yeah. like the best example of 
just how much influx is coming into the market and you know so crypt apps my my short answer i haven't really tried gemini i've heard good things about it it looks nice i don't know <laughs> hey you know have you guys heard of of buy.bitcoin.com no are you trying to get me on a scam here dale no that sounds sketchy <laughs> it sounds scammy bro <laughs> two dots I've caught, bought some Bitcoin on it and it worked. Now, probably someday it'll fucking come back and haunt me. Now. Dale, you are out of your mind going to a website with two dots in it. It's too much. <laughs> As we sit on google.hangouts.com or hangouts.google. Doxed. Yep. <laughs> Tabs, what else you got for us? Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think about mobile wallets? I've, I just downloaded, I think it's called Engine. I, it's spelled weird. Uh, it looks pretty slick, but like, How's the security? Have you guys tried any of these mobile wallets? Uh, okay, when I first got into crypto, I would I would be all about any of these mobile wallets, and now I'm like a stage nine paranoid freak, and like so I do not trust any of these mobile wallets. Like I've heard of too many of these things getting hacked, and when I fr- again when I first got into crypto, I was like, what could happen? These are legit companies. They have a website. It looks nice. And I'm like I would just put it, things anywhere. I've heard too I much. I used shit. to use uh, Jax. I remember when I first got in, I just used Jax for everything because they had the app for your. Computer. Yeah computer and then your phone and you could just link them all i was like oh this is wicked and then i'm like eh, this probably isn't the best thing to be leaving everything on uh, and then you start hearing stories of like people's private keys somehow being exposed yeah. and it's just like yeah i don't need to mess with that so um you know i just a hardware wallet to me is really your safest route but if you need you know obviously i you know you still have the uh, mobile wallets just uh and I got to say too, I mean, Coinbase gets a really shitty rap as like, a, oh, don't put your coins on Coinbase. I think all things considered, Coinbase is like a fairly safe place to store your coins, really. I mean, if you're worried about the government and like the records of your transactions, then it's a different story. But if you're just worried about like getting hacked and your shit just outright stolen, I think you're fairly okay. Uh, yeah, I think Coinbase, Coinbase is going to be one of your, probably your safest, safer bets. Yeah, uh, <laughs> And it's basically a mobile wallet. I mean, they have a nice app, you know, so it basically functions the same. You can access it from your iPhone phone or android so it doesn't really matter you know so i i would say just stick with stuff like that i know it only houses three coins which is a big big ass thing but it's kind of the game we play right now you know it's kind of the state of the industry yeah i've already got most of my coins you know off of exchanges the ones i want to keep for long term anyways but like for some other noobs out there uh like kind of the process of getting them off there and like onto your wallet where you can actually see them. That's kind of a difficult part using my ETH wallet or MetaMask. Uh, so like, what do you guys prefer? Like, what's your preference on those? I like my ether wallet. I use, uh, I use my, I use Mew for a lot actually. Um, and I find it pretty easy to use. Like, you know, you, there's a lot of ways to view your wallet, uh, the balance, you know, you got ether scan. Um, there's the other one too. I think, uh, I can't remember its exact name. But, you know, there's a lot of ways to view your tokens. And I think um, my Ether wallet is the most convenient for really carrying all of these. And honestly, I just, I say I use my Ether wallet and I like it because I've never really had an issue with it. Um, touch wood. So. <laughs> yeah, I have, dude. As you guys know, oh, for instance. I guess, uh, yeah, transaction fees. Um, this fucking my ether wallet anyway that might be and on yeah. the ethereum blockchain so maybe i'm blaming i'm That's blaming more the, the wrong person yeah, but, but um yeah um metamask i everyone uh, seems to like it i had a really tough time figuring it out um i i couldn't really understand what was going on and maybe i was just too new in blockchain at the time or bitcoin you know which was probably probably like eight months ago when i first looked at metamask and then swore it off forever so maybe it's not that confusing uh my ether wallet is fairly good I've had some problems sending shit, but I, again, I think that's on the Ethereum blockchain probably. Um, so I think those are decent choices, I would say. I use MetaMask too, and I don't have a problem with it, but I don't I don't really do much. You know, I'm not an active like day trader, so if I put something in it, it's going to stay put for a while. Yeah. Um, do you guys know what KYC is? I see a lot of new coins, uh, you know, talking <laughs> yes, about this. Yes, let's talk and about this. So I, it stands for know your customer, right? So yeah, yeah. they're trying to get you to reveal your identity, basically. Uh, can you guys yeah. talk a little more about that? Yeah, it's like a, it's a standard of basically information gathering that most financial institutions, at least in the U.S., are subject to. And basically all it means is that as a financial institution, you need to do your homework on who your customers are. You need to know their social security number. You need to do like a mini background check on them. 
make sure they're not a fugitive, make sure they haven't been arrested for money laundering, stuff like that. Like if you start to say, sign up for like a TD Ameritrade account, Charles Schwab, whatever, you're probably going to have to do some kind of KYC protocol, whether you know it or not. So, you know, kind of flip sides and look at crypto where people are very concerned about their identities. They don't want to give up information. Part of the appeal of the industry is that you're kind of off the beaten path, which is an attractive thing. Um, but a lot of these companies are really having to implement this KYC, these KYC measures for compliance reasons. If you're dealing with any kind of thing, whether it be crypto, a stock, a bond, any kind of thing that classifies as a quote-unquote security, then the company you're dealing with has to know who you are. They have to keep records of that. And the government has to know about that at the end of the day, too. So um, it's probably the sort of thing that all these exchanges should have been doing for a long time. And they're now just kind of being like, oh, we didn't know, you know, now that the regulators are, are, are clamping down. And they for sure knew. Like, don't get me. I mean, none of these guys are stupid. I mean, they, they knew they were kind of skirting regulations. Um, but you see it recently with Korea, where I think we had rumors of this Korea um, Bitcoin exchange ban, and it ended up just being enhanced KYC measures. And that's something that just came out in the past like couple hours, I think. So, mm -hmm. And Japan is kind of in the same boat, too, They're because uh, they're pretty good with uh, the Bitcoin exchanges on uh, the level for compliance and all that stuff. So they have, you know, pretty strict KYC stuff. I know um, even just using uh, Qrypto's. Uh, it's an exchange, a Japanese exchange, and I had to do a pretty extensive KYC uh, kind of go through a little thing. But, uh, you know, and I think it's just going to become more common already. You know, I think it's funny because just looking through ICOs, I, I find myself spending a ton of time just searching through ICOs. And the common theme right now is you're doing a KYC on every ICO. There isn't a single one I see anymore that is you can get away without it. Now, just back in November, you know, you could, you still, I'd say about 50% of the ICOs, you didn't have to do KYC. So it's, it's kind of funny just to look on that, like how fast, you know, it's coming into play where you yeah. do need to do this. They're all playing catch up. Yeah. And like to people who are like hardcore in the sort of like, I want to get off the grid sort of mindset, then KYC is a gigantic red flag of those people. You talk to some people in crypto and they will, they want nothing to do with any ICO that wants your real name, you know, your anything, anything like that. So it kind of depends on who you are. If that's not your personality type and you don't give a shit about that, then it's probably not going to make any kind of difference in how you operate in crypto. But depends on who to you me, are. You know, it sucks, right? Because like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to give my info to people like that. But, you know, if you stick to your guns on that, you're going to miss out on some really good opportunities somewhere down the line. Um, ICOs, there's some good ones. And if you're not willing to do the KYC, if you are in an area that, you know, you could get through with it, you know, there's an opportunity lost, right? So for sure. Yeah. Well, just more regulation coming in. So it's only going to get worse than that. Yeah. That sense. So, guys, give me your next bit connect. I know you guys are buying in. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Uh, the I, next... Well, there's actually like, isn't there like some clone? I I read it like yesterday. Oh, I think I heard there's like already two or three other lending platforms popping up now that BitConnect's gone down. Um, I don't think that's something we're gonna see slow down anytime soon. There's a lot of money to be made uh, for these people who are starting these things. Uh, because people, I think, right now, we've said it before on the show, where we're in such a mania. There's a lot of people who don't care to put in the research. They don't care to try to understand some of this stuff. All they care about is trying to line their pockets as quickly and as easily as possible. And because of that, scams are going to continue to run rampant and... You know, stuff like BitConnect is going to continue to happen. I think, you know, we're only going to see more of these things as uh, time goes on. So it, it's disappointing, but... Yeah, and like any of these scams, like you said, Prince, I mean, with how much publicity BitConnect has gotten, there are going to be a lot of people who look at that and go, hmm, interesting. Maybe I can do something similar. And a lot of people are going to be kind of emboldened by the fact that like, yeah, it blew up. But I mean, this shit made a lot of people a lot of money for a long time before it did blow up. So people might go, yeah, I know this is going to work out. You know, it's, eventually it's going to crash and fail, but people will employ scams and, and do stuff like that. Um, so it's going to give people a lot of ideas. You know, and to keep, continue on 
with the scams, there was a good scam today that happened actually with an ICO, the Benebit ICO. Uh, and now this is funny because I was actually, I looked at this uh, just yesterday. I was reading up on it. I was doing some research and I was like, you know, this is a bad looking thing. Like the whole, the website, you could tell everything. There was a lot of work put into this. Now, and you know, they even went as far to make fake LinkedIn profiles for the team members. Um, you know, they put in effort. They had a full white paper that looked good. The website was gorgeous. You know, the level of effort that these guys will put in, you know, you got to kind of almost give them a round of applause because these guys aren't joking around, right? These, I've said it a lot, but the best scammers in the world are in crypto, in my opinion, because it's just so easy for them to get away around in this. There's no laws. You know, they can do what they want. Um, and so, yeah, I think within an hour of the pre-sale opening today, uh, the Benebit founder, like the team members disappeared off their Telegram chat. Their <laughs> website went down. Twitter account vanished. Yeah, and I th- I can't remember. It, it was something like $3 million they got uh, within an hour. But you think about this now. They put this together and they were developing a community. You know, they put in the time. And this was months, you know, in the making, right? This wasn't just some overnight thing. This was something where it was like, oh, wow. Like, they put in effort. So... I think that's kind of an eye opener for people. You know, it's like, yeah, these scams, uh, they're evolving. They're getting better. You know what I mean? It's, it's scary, right? Like got to be on your toes. They're always one step ahead. It seems. All right, guys, serious question. Tide pods or cascade pods. <laughs> oh, I saw Dale was munching on a cascade pot earlier today. So, I had to ask. you know, I, that was my dessert, as I said, to my Tide Pod, but I, you know, I kind of like the Cascade one because it was a little more crunchy. It made it more, you know. Let's let's just put it this way: I ate the Cascade Pod and I drank it down with the Tide Pod. Yeah, you got more of a You're sand an texture. You That's why I like the Tide. It's got like a silky smooth texture. Like it kind of lines my throat as I swallow <laughs> it. It's really a delicious feeling and taste. So I, I go Tide. I think it's really good if you have a sore throat. It really soothes your throat. Yeah. You Wait, oh, real quick. Have you ridiculous. have you guys seen that video of that guy dabbing a Tide Pod? No. Yeah, I've seen no. it. It it's, doesn't oh look good. Oh my god. <laughs> Why would it you do that? Horrible. So he's inhaling this stuff like into his lungs. Like, yes. what the fuck is wrong like with a, people? For people who don't know, dabbing is like a way of smoking like weed wax or whatever. And so you basically you like you use a blowtorch to put this little piece of glass like the bowl and make it really really hot. And then you put like the weed wax on it and you smoke it, whatever. It's it's like a mini bong. So somebody did that with a Tide Pod. Like they get this That's... plate really, really hot and they pour a Tide Pod onto it. And the guy's just smoking all this Tide Pod smoke. That sounds absolutely terrible. Like he, like, I don't know, how, is he in the <laughs> hospital now? So like... kids, uh, go ahead and Google that right now and never do it. Oh my God, yeah. what the fuck is wrong? YouTube's been removing on Facebook too. They're removing all those videos. Oh, wow. And it's funny though, you bring up the video and you look at the guy and you're like, you are the exact kind of person that would dab a Tide Pod. (laughs) Like not to judge a book by its cover, but like I pulled it up after hearing about it and I was like, yep, makes sense. (laughs) What else you got for us, boss? I don't have a ton more serious question. I guess uh, Binance has a good mobile app. Uh, Do any other exchanges out there have decent ones? Doesn't really seem like it. Um, That's my knowledge. KuCoin so. has an app, although to get the KuCoin app, you kind of got to go around the Apple Store. Uh, I guess yes. if you're using an iPhone, um, and their app's not bad. Like I have it on my phone, but uh, well, I've downloaded like, it on Android. I got the APK and installed it, and it is garbage. Uh, I, I couldn't even get signed is in. It? Yeah, so oh, Jesus. as of yes. last week. So, <laughs> oh uh, God, try your own. Yeah. yeah, that's an area like nobody does well right now is mobile right. apps and crypto. I yeah. don't know like a single good one other than like the Coinbase app, maybe. Yeah, it's like you got Coinbase, Bitfinex has Lock an Folio, app. Delta, but you know, yeah. Bitfinex's app sucks for it. Just you know, it's because it's all done with your API key, and it just continuously would boot me out, and then I got to re re input the API key. And then again, who the hell really wants to use Bitfinex? Um, so yeah, I don't know. The app thing is tough. The convenience is not there yet for that. No, definitely not. All right, so Tap, you are an accounting major, correct? 
Yeah, I actually work in accounting, just a very niche market. So uh, not a tax accountant, but I know how to read and I did study <laughs> accounting. So I can probably <laughs> at least point some people in the You're that everybody, direction. he's an accountant. So, so <laughs> just for, for the record, none of this, what we're just going to talk about here coming up is tax advice. You should always seek out tax advice from an, an accredited an accountant, your accountant. But what we want to talk with with TAPS is um, maybe to talk about the tax bill for the for the United States citizens. Um, and then you'd also mention maybe what to look for for people that are going to file taxes and have that you should file taxes, obviously. And if you, you know, what to look for in an accountant that would be able to help you with crypto taxes. Yeah. Yeah. So this new tax bill just went through. It's going into effect January 1, 2018, so uh, we're in it now. Uh, You'll likely see a little savings on your tax, uh, depending how rich you are. Uh, The richer you are, the more savings you get. Uh, So if you're a broke boy, you're getting no savings. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) You might get a little bit. Um, Yeah, but essentially, uh, corporate... Corporations' tax rates, they were at 35%. They're dropping all the way down to 21%. So that is a massive change. Um, Likely not to affect us individuals a whole lot. Um, There are some individual benefits, though. This is in effect for, I think, eight years. So it'll be expiring in 2025. Um, So the final plan lowers tax rates for each income level. And it nearly doubles the standard deduction. So the standard individual deduction that you get to claim on your taxes. So that's nice. Um, There's some things uh, not changed that people might be interested in. So for, uh, so student loan deduction, that's not changing at all. You can deduct your student loan uh, interest expenses there. And then like medical expense deductions are not changing. Um, That's a very... Yeah, student loans. That's that's one of the reasons I got into crypto. See if I can get get them paid off super quick. Uh, so you. I am on my journey. Uh, I may get there. I may not. But it's, damn I right, think it's you worth will. A shot. I think it's worth a shot. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Yeah. So um, that. That's basically a really general overview of the tax bill. Uh, like I said, not a tax accountant, but um, there are some good articles out there. Wall Street Journal, Journal put out one, New York Times. Uh, so go read those guys. They know what they're talking about. So what um, if you're looking, say you cashed out a couple of Bitcoins this year, um, or last year, I should say, what would you look for in an accountant if you're wanting to file taxes? Like, for instance... My accountant said he has no idea what he's not really certain, so he's researching how to do it. So I don't know if I'm going to try and find someone new or. Yeah. I mean, I, wait, so, wait, 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 wait. This is for real money, though, right? So I guess with demo account, I don't have to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I real guys, quick, we're I on called demo my... accounts. Uh, remember, oh. <laughs> so this yeah. is if you want to file taxes for fun, just like practice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. Here's what I would do. I would go to your current accountant if you have one. If you don't, go find an accountant. You need one. Uh, pay us some money. Uh, so what you need to do is ask them if they know what a Bitcoin is. If they don't, no, they don't. No, no, they're gonna ask. They're gonna act like they do, bro. I'm telling you. I called no. my accountant like seven months ago. I'm like, I think I'm gonna have to report a lot of these Bitcoin profits. He's like, Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard a lot about that. I'll, I'll do some research and get back to you. Yeah. Six months later, I have not heard a word from this guy, and he's probably <laughs> avoiding me at this point. Yeah. So, I think if you hadn't brought it up to your accountant already, um, and you think he has no idea what he's talking about, I would go find one who specializes in crypto, but I would be wary about this um, because vet them just like anything else. Do your research, uh, see how long they've been doing taxes um, and get, get a general feel of what you think you need to be filing uh, taxes on crypto for. So here's some questions I would ask them. Um, Short-term versus long-term capital gains, which is more beneficial for you to take? Because obviously you're gaining money. You're not losing money, right? You can't lose in this market. That's what I've heard. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so 
Yeah, if you've all right, so short term, long term gains. What that means is these are called capital gains. Short term, less than one year. Long term, more than one year. So you're really holding on if you haven't traded once in that one year. Every trade you make is a taxable event. So Fuck if you're that. going, if you're going from one crypto to another, you're that's getting taxed. I know it sucks. Um, it's going to be really hard to track, especially for day traders, even swing traders. Um, but you know, the IRS is cracking down on this. They've teamed up with uh, Chain Analysis. If you guys have heard of them, they are tracking people down. I wouldn't mess with the IRS, IRS at all. Um, so you know, put in the time, make your accountant put in the time. Uh, <laughs> you know you're paying him for a reason. Come at me, IRS. Come at me, all right? I'm yeah. putting it out there. I'm calling you out. I, I don't think you know anything about crypto. For the Enjoy. record, that's Killer Whale, not Crypto Dale. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Just joking, guys. Crypto Nike, at Crypto Nike said that. <laughs> so another thing you need to look at is what kind, what amount of money uh, you're doing, you're dealing with here. Um, if you're Crypto Nike, probably like 20 bucks. You don't need to go and report that, right? <laughs> So, uh, but he probably wants you to say that. (laughs) Damn, the noob taking shots at Nike. I I don't know. He's going to his head. This podcast appearance, Jesus. Nike, (laughs) haven't ever spoken to you, but uh, let's be friends, bro. Uh, Yeah. So, what I'm talking about is it a hobby or is it business? Um, This is a question you'll ask your accountant. He'll be able to describe it to you. Obviously, you're going to be able to tell uh, if you're not really making money probably a hobby, right? Uh, you don't need to really report that. Nobody makes money in crypto. Yeah, if you're trading demo Can't accounts make money like on us, demo it's accounts. a hobby. Yeah, so uh, another question I would ask them is, should you set up a different bank account um, or maybe even a pass-through entity? Um, so they'll be able to give me more information on this, um, but this is something I really encourage you guys to look into is if you're dealing with a lot of money, I wouldn't be trading under your uh, individual name at all. I would probably set up uh, a pass-through entity, which could be like a S corp or an LLC, most likely an LLC. Um, there are huge tax benefits to this. Um, don't quote me, but I believe it's uh, about 20% of your ordinary income can be deducted if you pass through an LLC. It's not that much more paperwork. I think maybe once more schedule, one more line you have to fill out on your personal tax return. Um, so again, this is not tax advice. Uh, go research for yourself. Ask your accountant, not me. Um, I am a CPA in training. Uh, so if that tells you anything, I don't know anything. <laughs> no one does, brother. <laughs> Oh, this is really good insight, though. And for the record, yeah. we we do have a couple accountant CPAs lined up um, that will be on here shortly. Perfect. Yeah, probably within within the next couple of weeks, um, we'll have like somebody following up on that topic, and we'll kind of we'll take a, a deeper dive sort of into. It. So we'll yeah, that's look keep an eye out for that, everybody. Yeah. So yeah. so taps. Thanks for kind of scratching the surface on that. That's it's still good shit to hear. So, killer, what you got for current events? Uh, one thing I want to talk about, I saw an article on Coindesk about companies that are public companies listed on like the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, yada, yada, companies that have nothing to do with Bitcoin or blockchain, but that add one of those terms to their name, like crypto, blockchain, whatever. One example was a Long Island iced tea company. I think oh, it was yeah. called the Long Island iced tea <laughs> company, like a, an alcoholic beverage company. And they changed yeah. their name from Long Island Iced Tea to Long Blockchain Company. Um, <laughs> and they said they were going to get involved in crypto mining operations. Their stock went up like 5,000%. I'm completely making that number up, but it was a big number. And so the SEC is putting out uh, a warning to investors just to be wary of those companies. And I would echo that because, you know, along with how much money there is in crypto and how much money is being made, there are a lot of scammers like we talked about, a lot of companies that are trying to make a quick buck quick buck with like pump and dump schemes and things like that. So keep an eye out for that. But it's it's egregious the level of, you know, these companies Kodak. are going to. Kodak, yeah, geez. Yeah, yeah, Kodak. Good point. Kodak coin. What? Frick. There was another one. It was like a cigar company on the pink sheets. <laughs> and they yeah. put like, I don't know, it's like they somehow they included blockchain in their business. And that same day, it was up like f- over 400% in a day. Their stock. And, it, you know, it's just, 
he can see it. It's getting a little out of hand. It's like, okay, guys, you don't really do anything here. Like, you know, a Long Island iced tea company. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, crypto, Crypt Taps. Man, that's a fucking mouthful. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Again, follow him at it, his Twitter accounts, Crip, C-R-Y-P, Taps, T-A-P-S. He's got Christoph Porzingas, the unicorn, as his picture and his header. Go give him a fo- follow. He's very, very smart for being uh, labeled a noob. So thank you very much for being on, man. <laughs> very last minute, too. So appreciate your flexibility. Thanks for having me um, on, guys. Yeah, no problem. Any yeah, it was awesome, final Thanks, parting dude. words? Um. Pats or Eagles? Pats, man. Eagles oh, fans are Pats. Pats. Tom Brady. He's the GOAT. I hate the Patriots. I'm a Jets fan, which is an abysmal, a horrible existence um, filled with much misery and strife. Uh, so screw the Patriots, but they are going to beat the Eagles by about 40 points. Uh, <laughs> nice. There we go. Everyone, we go. thanks for listening. Appreciate your support. Make sure you... You rate or uh, subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and rate us. Give us five stars and only five stars because we are okay, I think. Um, Tip your damn waitress. Peace out. Take care. See ya.